Today's topic is pleural effusion. So let's start by knowing what is pleural effusion. Between the chest wall and the lung, there is a space called pleural cavity. So in this cavity, normally 10 to 20 ml of fluid is present to enable lubrication between the surfaces. But anything more than this becomes abnormal and is called pleural effusion. So what causes this abnormal level of fluid accumulation? It could be either increased production or decreased drainage. Increased production could be transudative or exudative. Transudative effusion is seen in non-inflammatory conditions like heart failure, liver failure, renal failure. In this, either the hydrostatic pressure increases or oncotic pressure decreases. Exudative effusion is seen in inflammatory conditions like cancer, infections of the lung, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematis. I also mentioned a reason saying when the lymphatic system is not able to drain away the fluid. So this can be caused when the thoracic duct is disrupted. For example, any trauma to the thoracic duct during surgery or any tumor which is invading the thoracic duct. So if a patient has pleural effusion, what are some of the symptoms he'll come with? He will have pain during respiration and shortness of breath. So why does that happen? The cavity is filled with fluid and his lungs are not able to expand completely. So this will cause shortness of breath and pain. Now when you start examining him, what are the findings? Let's start with inspection. During inspection, you can notice he's tachypneic or short of breath. And you can see the trachea is slightly shifted to the opposite side. Upon palpation, you can confirm that the trachea is shifted to the opposite side and also there is decreased expansion of the lung on the affected side because his lungs are not able to expand completely. Then coming to percussion, you will get a stony dull note and this is specifically in the lower part of the lung where the fluid has settled down. On auscultation, you can see that there is absent breath sounds in the base again because the fluid has settled in the base absent breath sound and also decreased vocal resonance so this is at the base of the lung above the effusion you can hear crackling sounds or bronchial breath sounds now you know the symptoms you know what findings you will get on examination now let's go to diagnosis so for diagnosis you have to do a pleural tap or thoracocentesis where you extract the fluid and distinguish whether it's transudative or exudative. So to distinguish whether it's transudative or exudative, there is something called LIGHTS criteria. In LIGHTS criteria, there are three points. Any one of these three points will confirm that it is exudative. So what are the three points? First thing is that the pleural fluid protein is to serum fruit protein ratio should be greater than 0.5. Second thing is that the pleural fluid LDH is to serum LDH should be greater than 0.6. Third thing is that the pleural fluid LDH should be more than two thirds of the upper limit of norms, normal serum LDH. Another thing which can help in the diagnosis is X-ray. In X-ray, you can see that the fluid is collected at the base. So it looks like the lung is floating on top of the collected fluid. And then when you take a decubitus x-ray, that is when you make the person lie down and take the x-ray, it looks like the fluid and the lungs are layered. That is the fluid has got dispersed upon lying down. Now once the diagnosis is confirmed, let's learn how to manage it, how to treat this. So firstly, treat the underlying cause. As we have seen so far, it's more, pleural effusion is more of a secondary disease rather than a primary disease. It's, it's because of infection, because of cancer, because of heart failure, because of liver failure that it's leading to pleural effusion. So treat the underlying cause as much as possible. Secondly, you have to aspirate the pleural fluid. Just when you aspirate the fluid for diagnosis itself, you can see the patient is relieved of a lot of symptoms. Then the third thing you can do is to give diuretics to drain the fluid out. But if the fluid is infected, that is it's, if it's pus, if it's empyema, you have to make sure to use a chest tube and drain it because it can lead to complications because the fluid is already infected. So make sure to remove it with a chest tube, drain it with a chest tube. 
Sometimes in the cases of TB or pneumonia, the effusion becomes thick and loculated. In such cases, a simple needle aspiration will not suffice. Even chest tube will be difficult to drain. In such cases, you have to go ahead and do surgery to remove the fluid. Now, in cases of malignancy, every time you remove the fluid, it will reaccumulate. So, for such cases, there is a process called pleurodesis. In pleurodesis, you basically form scar tissue between the two pleura so that they adhere to each other and no fluid can recur because the fluid keeps on accumulating you give a permanent solution that is you make a scar tissue and call it pleurodesis now when you are doing the pleural tap or thoracocentesis you have to make sure to insert the needle just above the rib because below the rib are your neurovascular bundles so to prevent damage to them always make sure to insert the needle just above the rib and not below to avoid damage to the neurovascular bundle. So to summarize, pleural effusion is the collection of fluid between lung and chest wall. It could be transudative, exudative or lymphatic. Symptoms would be pain and shortness of breath because it's not able to expand, lung is not able to expand and examination findings are specific in inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. For diagnosis, you do thoracentesis or x-ray and for management, a pleural tap, uh, if it's thicker than chest tube, if it's thicker than that, then surgery um, and treat the underlying cause.